What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to overclock the new Raspberry Pi 3 B+. But before we get started, a word of warning. Anytime you're overclocking or messing with voltages or frequencies, there's always a chance of damaging your hardware from heat or voltage. So you got to keep that in mind. There is a risk when overclocking. So follow this tutorial at your own risk. I will not be held responsible if you cut your finger off, burn your house down, or destroy your Raspberry Pi. Before you even start thinking about overclocking, you will need some kind of CPU cooler on your Raspberry Pi. There are several out there for the Raspberry Pi 3, but the problem is a lot of them don't fit the new Raspberry Pi 3B+. This is actually one of my favorite coolers, but it won't fit the new B+, because we have some pins in the way and the new Wi-Fi block. It will have to be modified. You will have to cut it. Hopefully the manufacturers will come out with something for the B+, but for right now, we're gonna have to be dealing with smaller heat sinks. Now you can always get these small heat sinks. They come with canicates and things like this, but they really don't do a lot. With a fan on them, I guess they could be sufficient, but I recommend getting a bigger heat sink. Now there's some on Amazon, the one I'm using is actually from an ASUS Tinkerboard, but I found some that are almost the exact match on Amazon. You can get four for like $10. They do come with thermal pads, but it's non-adhesive. So you're also going to need some thermally adhesive tape. It's pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description. You could also make your own heat sink out of an old GPU cooler or something like that, but you will have to cut it to fit. Now the thermal adhesive that I use here is this fiberglass thermal adhesive tape. It's about $11 for this roll here. It'll last me a long time and I've already used a lot of it. It actually works really well. I use it on all of my single board computers and it's really sticky. Even though you're using this bigger heat sink here, I also recommend a fan because when these CPUs hit a certain temperature, they start down clocking the speed to keep it cool. So your Pi will slow down if it gets too hot. With a fan and a heat sink like this, you can pretty much go full blast all day long. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this thermal tape on my heat sink. Really easy to do. I'm just going to grab my heat sink, line it up with the edge, and I'm going to cut the rest off with an X-Acto knife right around it just to match it up. So I peeled the tape up a little bit here. I'm just going to place it right on my heat sink. And I also kept an extra little sliver so I can attach the fan to the top of the heat sink. Now this isn't the best way to go, but it does work so you don't have to manufacture a fan holder or something like that. It does work really well. Like I mentioned, this stuff is really sticky. So I'm just going to take another little piece here. I'm going to peel the blue backing off of it. Then I'm going to kind of roll it up or just fold it up. And this is going to go right on the back of the fan. Now make sure your fan is facing the correct direction. I know that my fan actually blows out towards the bottom here. So it's a perfect match for a heat sink like this. Just gonna place it right on top of the heat sink. It's gonna stick there. And I'll plug my fan into the two GPIO pins, five volt and ground. If you really wanna get into it, you could build a mount or cut a hole in the top of your case if it doesn't accept a fan. But for me, it works just fine. This is gonna be sitting right on my desk and it's gonna keep this Raspberry Pi 3B Plus really cool. And now it's time to go ahead and overclock. I'm going to be using Raspbian, but this will work with RetroPie, Raspbian, or any other operating system that has a config.txt on the boot partition of the SD card after you flash it. The main reason I'm using Raspbian in this video is to show you a couple of benchmarks after it's overclocked because it does make a difference. This method will work on Mac, Linux, or Windows. I'm going to be moving over to my Windows machine. You could always do it all from the Raspberry Pi in the terminal. But I always use another machine to add the lines to the config.txt because it's a lot easier and if anything goes wrong, all you have to do is delete those lines. Let's move over to my Windows PC now and get this thing overclocked. Before we get started, I just want to mention this one more time. Use this at your own risk. There's always a chance of messing up your Raspberry Pi. But in my case, these are $35 computers made to tinker with. So let's go ahead and overclock. I have created a text file. You can download it from the description. This will come in really handy. Use at your own risk. After you overclock, you kind of want to see if it's really overclocked. So we can do that by opening up a terminal and pasting this right in there. This will display the max frequency of the CPU. 
Next up, you might want to stress test or benchmark. If you're running Raspbian, you can install Sysbench really easily. sudo apt git install sysbench. Then you can run this command here in a terminal and it'll run a sysbench. Four threads, it's gonna max out the CPU. We're gonna do a prime benchmark up to 20,000. You can change the 20,000 to whatever you'd like, but I find that if you run this two or three times, you're pretty much stable. And finally, we have some overclock profiles here. Now there's a few to choose from. You can mess around with these if you'd like to. I'm gonna go over a few of them here. 1.45 gigahertz. Now the stock Raspberry Pi B Plus is already at 1.4 gigahertz. This is just a 500 megahertz jump. We've also overclocked the GPU, which will definitely help out with gaming and things like that. Now it's really up to you which one of these you wanna use. Here's a 1.5 gigahertz with no GPU overclock, just the CPU being overclocked to 1.5 gigahertz. 1.5 CPU with 500 megahertz GPU. And the one I use here is 1.575 gigahertz. Also have a 500 megahertz overclock on the GPU and RAM. So you might notice this over voltage here. It's really doing nothing for these newer Raspberry Pis. They automatically go up to the correct voltage. And the highest that I can get my voltage here is 1.394. If I could go a little higher, I'm sure I could get 1.6 out of it, but that's the max that the new power management system is allowing us to go. And the very last overclock, a lot of people will not be able to run this, is 1600 megahertz. If you're able to run this stably, let me know in the comments below, please, because I can get it to work. Sometimes it works for an hour, sometimes it works for a minute. I always get a crash out of it. But I'm gonna be going with the 1.57 gigahertz overclock. I'm gonna go ahead and snap this over to the left-hand side. It's gonna be real easy to copy and paste these. Next thing we're gonna need is Notepad++. This is free to use, I'm on a Windows machine. You can also use text edit if you're on a Mac machine. We're gonna download this. Super simple, very safe. Get the installer. Go ahead and install it. Mine's already installed. I might just write over it. I don't wanna run it yet. Click finish. We can close that browser down. I'm gonna go ahead, take the SD card that I have Raspbian installed on, and I'm gonna plug it into my PC. It's gonna show up as boot. Mine's F, yours might be G. Inside of here, we have a config.txt file. Right click, edit with Notepad++. This is gonna open it up. I'm gonna snap it over here to the right hand side. So there's a lot of stuff in here, might look intimidating and it kinda is. Line 42, this is where we're gonna be pasting our overclock profile. If you uncomment this, by removing this hashtag, you're gonna be at 800 megahertz. We do not want that. We want a higher clock. So I'm gonna go with the 1.57 gigahertz. I'm just gonna copy all of this. Copy, and I'm gonna paste it right here. File, save. If for some reason you can't overclock whatsoever, all you have to do is delete the lines you added. Just delete these and your overclock will be gone. You'll be at the stock 1.4 gigahertz CPU speed and you'll be able to boot right back up. So we're here, make sure you definitely save, file, save, I've already done so. We're gonna close out, close out of this. We're gonna move over to the Raspberry Pi. First thing I'm gonna do is actually run a benchmark with the stock CPU speeds, no overclock at all. Then we're gonna run a benchmark at the new overclock of 1.57 gigahertz. All right, so here we are at the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I'm at the stock speeds, I'm gonna run a quick benchmark. I'll open up a terminal. I've also taken that text file and brought it over here with me on a flash drive. We wanna find the max frequency that we're running right now. We can just copy and paste this. This is gonna spit out the max frequency of the CPU. 1.4 gigahertz. Next thing you wanna do is install Sysbench. I already have mine installed, so I'm just gonna run it now. Copy everything right here. To run, copy, 
paste. Enter. It's going to take a little while to run this benchmark. Lower is better with this benchmark. Total time, 79.7754. I'm going to expand this. 1.4 gigahertz, 79.7754. I'm going to go ahead and do an overclock real quick at 1.57 gigahertz right here. And then we're going to come right back, run the same benchmark, and I want to show you how much faster it is. Okay, I'm back with the 1.57 overclock. I'm going to show you the frequency. 1.57. I'm going to run that benchmark again. With the overclock, total time was 70.8373. We finished this benchmark 9 seconds faster than the stock clock. So overall 9 seconds doesn't sound like a lot for a modern PC, but for a small single board computer like the Raspberry Pi, 9 seconds is a really good gain out of an overclock. If you also went ahead and overclocked the GPU, you will notice better performance in some games. You'll also notice better performance in video playback. But overall, this is as high as I can get my Raspberry Pi 3B+. And I think it's a pretty decent overclock. I really appreciate you guys watching. I would love to know what you guys can overclock your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus up to. So leave it in the comments. But try to be honest about your overclocks. I've seen people say they've overclocked the Raspberry Pi 2 to 1.8 gigahertz and it's stable all day. I truly don't believe them. I do not think it's possible. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you can overclock your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus on up there. I would love to see somebody with 1600 megahertz. You can download the text file from the link in the description. I'm also leaving a link to Notepad++ so you can edit your config.txt. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. And like always, thanks for watching.